I want to welcome you to another segment of endodontic education. Today I'd like to focus on three-dimensional obturation. Let's get started. When we look at the ability to fill root canal systems, it has largely been enabled by the improvements in technology. And through technology, it's allowed virtually any dentist who is interested and has desire to fill root canal systems. Before we get into this, in terms of the technique and the armamentarium, let's just look at this maxillary first molar posterior abutment tooth. The tooth has had endo, perio, and prosthetics. And the palatal root has been amputated. Notice the buccal systems. I want to bring your attention specifically to the mesial buccal root. Notice within the MB1 and MB2 at midroot, there's an anastomosing, and within that anastomosis, there's another canal who has its own length and terminal portal of exit. When we can do endodontics like this, when it's properly performed, it is actually the cornerstone of restorative and reconstructive dentistry. These kinds of results are exciting. And through this excitement, it has motivated countless dentists in my career to choose to use some form of warm gutta percha. Well, back to the graphic model. By spinning this tooth, we can begin to appreciate that there's root canal systems. In other segments, we've talked about access, glide path management, shaping canals. Shaped canals can hold a reservoir of sodium hypochlorite that can be actively exchanged into the deep lateral anatomy. And once this space has been sufficiently cleaned, we have the ability to use warm vertical condensation or a carrier-based obturation method to fill root canal systems. So let's look at some of the concepts and objectives behind three-dimensional obturation. This was an old endodontic friend of mine and is currently an endodontic friend of mine. But many years ago, this endodontist called me and said he had a little problem with his maxillary central incisor. And would I be willing to take a look at it? And of course, we could talk for some time about how one might manage this maxillary right central incisor. But in essence, what you can see radiographically is there's been previous treatment. It's, there's deficiencies with the primary treatment. There's internal resorption. It's going to be a long access path down from the lingual surface to the gutta percha. We want to be careful how we select methods to remove this little segment of gutta percha, lest we get a slurry of chloroperca into that internal resorptive defect, which would block the ability to remove it. And that would probably block the entry into available anatomy through our subsequent sodium hypochlorite irrigation procedures. So retreatment we'll talk about at another time on a different day, but suffice it to say, when you see teeth like this, there is a rationale, there are objectives for filling root canal systems. With a little bit of disassembly, you can see we've regained access. We have now shaped the canal, we have fit a cone. We can syringe in some injectable thermal softened gutta percha lateral to the master cone. This will encourage better hydraulics when we commence with the down packed phase of the warm vertical condensation technique. So through a series of heatings and condensations, we can soften that cone and mold it precisely into the shape of the root. The post-operative image is fairly exciting. You can see complete endodontics has been accomplished. And I'm happy to report my friend still has this tooth 20 years later. So when we begin to look into the access cavities of teeth that have been shaped and disinfected, we can choose some gutta percha cones in this particular technique that I'm going to describe first, and that will be the vertical condensation technique. So we would start off with a cone fit. And if we're talking about pro taper shapes, then pro taper has its own matching gutta percha cones to match the specific finishing files. We always fit cones in a wet canal because that will more closely simulate the ensuing step when we dry the canals and then lubricate the cone with a cement or sealer and that cement or sealer will help the cone slide through the pathway to the terminus of the canal. So always fit your cones in a wet canal versus a dry canal so you don't have artificial tug back. We're going to need some pluggers. 
These are the dense ply calamus pluggers and they're made to compress thermal softened gutta percha into the root canal space. We have in this instance four pluggers whose working in diameters are 0 0.5 millimeters, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 1.3 millimeters. Typically, in any given canal, we'll choose two or three pluggers to effectively accomplish the task. Notice carefully that the working end of the pluggers have convenient gradations, and these gradations occur at 5, 10, 15, and 20 millimeters. We can use suction to aspirate out most of the reagent from a well-shaped canal, but at the end of the day, you will need a few paper points to wick out and absorb the moisture from the apical one-third. Paper points, again, are appropriately sized based on the system you used. In this case, I'm talking about Pro Taper shapes, so Pro Taper system has matching paper points. Again, you can see their convenient gradation lines on the more proximal side of each paper point. I still use Kerr Pulp Canal Sealer. Herb Schilder invented this sealer for the warm gutta percha technique, and it's as relevant today as it was over 40 years ago when he first developed the technique. Well, if you look at Kerr Pulp Canal Sealer, let's go over some of the advantages that I see as critical to filling root canal system. I did my master thesis at Harvard University many, many years ago on the adaptation of warm gutta percha to dentinal surfaces. And we noticed that the sealer interface between the gutta percha and dentin was on the order of six, seven, or eight microns. So when I mentioned six to eight microns, it means that the cement can flow into these small, delicate ramifications that are present when they've been cleaned out. We can vary the viscosity based on the canal. Generally speaking, the manufacturer recommends one shovel of zinc oxide powder to one drop of eugenol liquid, one to one. I use one to one in longer canals, more narrow canals, and more curved canals. On the contrary, in shorter, straighter, and larger diameter canals, I will mix two shovels of powder to one drop of liquid. So we can vary the viscosity based on the case. Of course, when we talk about cytotoxicity, it is clear that any unset cement will cause some cytotoxicity in the early hours before final set. Kerr pulp canal sealer, when fully set, is non-cytotoxic, and there's been an abundance of histology done on block sections of both live patients and animal studies showing how well it's adapted and accommodated by the body. It's non-resorbable. I had the honor of training at Harvard University, postgraduate program at Harvard Foresight. And in that program, we had grandmasters come in and teach us and show us their recall films. And they would show us 35 and 40 year recalls and the puff of cement is still associated with the portal of exit on the radicular surface of the root. I do not want to use a resorbable cement. Resorbable cements are just that. They're carried away by the body, and over a little bit of time, it begins to open up the root canal system to secondary leakage, which invites longitudinal failure. I'd like to use a heat-activated sealer. Certainly, in the warm gutta percha technique, we're going to be using a heat source, and this heat source will tend to drive the reaction so you have even a faster set. This is desirable. We want to use sealers that block pain. This is the only one I'm aware of on the planet Earth that does. In fact, to talk about a little bit more specifically, when you mix eugenol with zinc oxide, you form zinc eugenates. Zinc eugenates block prostaglandins. And as we all recall from so many years ago when we were in school, prostaglandins are implicated in pain mediation by causing mast cells to lice releasing histamine. We can block this entire pathway by just using the correct sealer. Finally, Kerr Pulp Canal Sealer is the fastest setting sealer in the business today. On the bench, it sets in two hours. In the mouth, 
with humidity and a body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade, it's going to set in about 15 to 30 minutes. This means by the time the patient is provisionalized or the final restoration is placed, that means by the time they leave the office, make arrangements at the front desk for a subsequent visit, get in their car and drive back to work or home, the cement is already set. And when the cement is set, healing begins. Healing cannot begin when there's loose, runny sealer still out in the attachment apparatus. Well, the one thing that hasn't been said that I'm sure all of you are talking about and thinking about is, can you really use a eugenol-based sealer and still do adhesion dentistry and bond effectively? And I would like to dispel this misnomer because it is definitely possible to do adhesion dentistry and get resin tags in dentinal tubules if you do two things. Following treatment, we need to remove all the excess sealer and gutta percha components from the pulp chamber. And that is done with a cotton pledget dipped in a solvent like xylol or if you prefer chloroform. We would never say chloroform in front of a patient, lest it provoke some fear or consternation. So we would typically say C solution or just pass the solvent. So the pledget is liberally soaked in a solvent. The pledget is put in the, uh, the pulp chamber. The axial walls are scrubbed clean. And you might do this with two or three pledgets before everything looks to your eye to be extremely cleansed out and the walls are free and devoid of any sealer or gutta percha. Now use 70% isopropyl alcohol on another pledget and this will remove any remaining precipitates that may reside on the axial walls. This same concept can be used suborifice level in the instance when a prosthetic post would be placed to facilitate the restorative efforts. So we can still bond and do adhesion dentistry perfectly fine and have the best sealer that endodontics has to offer. Manufacturer's directions are to mix one drop to one shovel of powder. So you saw three shovels of powder, so we're using three drops and perhaps the assistant will put one on the side in case we need it. Train your auxiliaries to really crush down this sealer on the mixing pad, fan it out over a thin microfilm over a large surface area, and then incorporate all the powder into the liquid. When you pull up the sealer, it should not be too runny. We do not want the sealer to run back to the pad because that would suggest we need more powder so we have a nice viscous body to restrict and limit the surplus after filling. For the heat source, I use the calamus dual. On the left, you can see the heat handpiece. You can see the blue circumferential activating cuff, and if your glove finger touches that blue cuff, that will bring instant heat to the electric heat plugger. If you look at the control panel, the control panel on the left, basically, is how you do your settings for the handpiece on the left. And on the right, we have a panel that controls the right hand piece and that is what's going to deliver thermal softened injectable gutta percha. This is a marvelous unit and can be used by any dentist who wants to get into warm vertical condensation. On the other hand, I had used the touch and heat for probably close to 20 years, a very, very effective heating source. And there are other heat transfer units that you probably have heard of and may even have. The point is, we're going to set this unit for warm gutta percha. As a quick distinction, if we're doing the continuous wave technique, we would set the electric handpiece pluggers at 200 degrees as you see on the digital panel. If in fact, you're going to do multi-wave classic shoulder, the temperature would be set at 350 degrees centigrade to encourage that technique. If we look a little bit closer at the electric heat pluggers, you can see that there are three of them. And basically, the tip is 40 and the taper is 3% on the black identification electric heat plugger. 
Then you can see the yellow is 5005 and the blue is 6006. I, for doing the classic shoulder technique, I'm using permanently the 4003. I'm not using the 5005 and the 6006. In fact, the yellow and blue electric heat pluggers are for those colleagues who choose the continuous wave technique. These insert electric heat pluggers immediately uh, unite with the distal end of the electric handpiece and that would allow it to seat and make a tight junction so it will be operational. On the other hand, if you use the Calamus Flow handpiece, you can see a portion of the blue circumferential activating cuff and when the glove finger touches that, you will begin to extrude thermal soft and gutta percha from the heat chamber. Notice the little window in the distal end of the Calamus Flow handpiece and if you look very carefully, you can see a little red indicator ball. That ball is traveling from right to left and when the ball gets to the far left, it means you have exhausted all of your gutta percha in your cartridge and you need to take off the blue wing nut so you can insert a new cartridge with the cannula. I'm using the 23 gauge cannula. In this segment, we looked at the various tools that are required to do the warm gutta percha with vertical condensation technique. The emphasis on all these tools was they work best in well-shaped canals.